It's very difficult to get an insight into certain scams, and one of those is the tax scam. This is where scammers pretend to be your local tax authority, the IRS, CRA or the HMRC in the UK. And this group, in India, are doing just that. This is inside the offices of a tax scam operation. And we're going to see just how they steal people's money. The people who run this scam are in the northwest city of Mohali in India. They operate in one floor of a shared building called Prosperity Square. And they really prosper with this scam. The reason why their scam is so effective is the techniques that they use, and we'll see some real recordings which highlight what they do. And as always, the first part of their scam is to send out lots and lots of robocalls. The ones that they use sound like this. Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs. This call has been made to take down your solicitor's contact information in regards to a legal case that has been submitted to the High Court by the HMRC. To know more about this please press 1. Now most people know that the HMRC never make cold calls like this. They will write to people and the majority of calls that I heard went something like this. Revenue and Customs, how can I help you? You've just called me so I'm wondering what, what you're ringing for. Well, um, I suppose Miss, you must have received some information before you got connected to me. Because I was the wasn't the first officer who reviewed the phone. I don't know what you're saying. Now, I know what information did you receive, miss? Well, obviously you've sent a message saying that there is HMRC or something, but you're not HMRC, you've rang me up a mobile number. So why are you still on the phone call? I can't hear what you're saying. I'm saying that why are you still on the phone line, miss? You can end up the phone call. Because you've rang me, so... But if you think that... Were you, were you hoping it was somebody vulnerable you can scam, yeah? Sorry? Were you hoping it was somebody vulnerable you can scam? No. Why don't you actually get a life and f*** off? Yeah. I'm leaving one. And what a life he lives. Every day he makes thousands of these phone calls together with about 10 other colleagues in that one room. But it's all a numbers game. If you make enough phone calls, eventually you will get one answered by someone who's vulnerable. And unfortunately, this particular scam has a few aspects which makes it slightly more believable than others. And the reason that it works so well is that it's a very tried and tested script. Here I'm logging on to the scammer's protected text so that I can read exactly what a script says. It's based off a US script. It used to be that it was only the IRS scam that was run, but here you can see it's been adapted for HMRC. And although it has a UK slant to it, the scammers don't realise that people on HMRC don't have things like badge numbers and they certainly don't call themselves officers. Yet you will hear those terms whenever the scammers speak. But what exactly do they say to people to convince them that they are the HMRC and to part with some money? I'm going to break down the audio of a real scam into a few elements so that you can understand how this process works. Some are psychological, but others rely on phone calls and caller ID to convince the victim that they're real. Arguably the most important part of the scam, apart from sounding convincing, is to gather information about the victim. When one is pressed and the call is connected, this is what the scammer sees. They'll always see the phone number, and at best they will see a forename, a surname, an address, and a postcode or zip code. This personal data is usually always out of date, and the scammer will have to establish exactly who he's talking to, because he certainly can't rely on what's on his screen. So practically, the first thing he'll ask the victim is, did you get a reference number? There never will be a reference number, but he'll then use that as an excuse to ask for personal details. Your call has been connected to HM Revenue and Customs. How can I help you? Hi, um, I'm just ringing. I've just had a, a missed call. Well, not a missed call. I've just answered it and it said press one. So I did. All right, Miss Well, you got connected to the tax information department of the HMRC to the Income Tax Division. You're speaking with Officer Tom Dalton right now. 
May I know if you have received Probably. a reference number or any correspondence at the moment? Um, no, not that at all. Mm -hmm. All right, well, Miss, in that case, I need to pull up your file on my system to figure out in what regards you've been contacted to. Can you help me with your full name and the postcode registered with HMRC so I can fetch your file? Oh, can you please be more slow, Miss? Can you help me with the postcode again? Uh, M22. Yeah. All right, give me a moment, let me check for the details, miss. So he's already got someone to volunteer some personal details. He'll look up her postcode to make sure that it looks valid, and he'll also establish the house number. This will give her full address. They often use Google Maps at this point to look up the house to see how much they can maybe get away with. Okay, well, I got your details on my system, miss, and I got your file, in which I can see that one of the senior officer from tax office was trying to contact you in order to take down your solicitor's details. ACHMRC is about to register a legal okay, case. What's it, tell me, what's it about? I, I don't know what it's about. Uh, yes, I haven't got miss. any questions because I don't know what it's about. Mm -hmm. Well, miss, there's a case which is uh, being about to get registered by HMRC in the courthouse, in the Chancery Division of the courthouse for tax evasion. We have found multiple mistakes and miscalculations regarding your case. Uh, we have found that your taxes have been paid, that we are there, but they are being deducted uh, incorrect. Uh, incorrect amounts of taxes have been paid from your end to the government. That's the reason HMRC have registered this legal case for tax evasion in your name. Right. So, it can, so I've been paying the wrong... I, I am employed, so I don't set the tax code. I just literally get my wages. This has all laid the groundwork for getting the victim to pay thousands of pounds or as much as they can get away with. But to pull this off, they're going to have to use some psychology. The next part of the scam is to sound official and get the victim to question why they didn't check the taxes themselves. In theory, a guilty victim is more likely to comply with the requests and will actively want to make a payment to resolve the situation. Okay. All right, miss. So please note down your case ID, first of all. Okay. It's D for Delta. The scammer would just give the same reference number to anyone who made it this far into the scam. If anyone called back, they would insist on them reading back this it's number. It's the HM Revenue Code. It's 6331H for hotel. It's the code under which your case has been registered, Miss, for tax evasion. Okay? I don't understand why you keep saying tax evasion. This is like a really serious thing, and I'm not very happy that I'm being accused of tax evasion when I've never actually done tax return. Okay. This well, is a really let me serious just allegation. I'm not very happy. Uh, I understand your concern is, but Miss, I'm on the other side, I'm just providing you the same information I can see in your file right at the moment, okay? So please find a cooperate that. with me. Yeah. Please have a bit of patience and please cooperate with me. And I'll be reading out your affidavit report, so I'd like to do, tell you that uh, this call is being recorded, actually, and I'll be forwarding your statements to the higher authorities after we end this phone call. At the moment, um, I'll be reading out your report, so please listen to each and every statement very carefully. And I would request you to not interrupt me while I'm reading out your report. Once I'm done, you can ask me any questions, any doubts you have in your mind, okay? If you're familiar with the IRS script, this part will sound familiar. He wants the victim to stay quiet as he officially reads out something with big words like affidavit. It's all just an attempt to give an air of authority and direction. I'll skip through the script if you really want to see it. I've left a link in the description. But it essentially says that the victim has to pay nearly £3,000 in overdue tax. This is where the third phase of the scam kicks in. However, not everybody is convinced at this point that they really are speaking to the HMRC, and this is where the scammers play their trump card. They pretend to call the victims using a number which is published supposedly on the government website. Uh, do you have the internet access yes. right now? Okay. Yes. Uh, can you please uh, go to the uh, government website, that is gov.uk? Gov.uk is a genuine government website, but here the scammer will make the victim look up a very specific search. Gov.uk, yeah? Oh, uh, yes. G-O-V mm -hmm. dot U-K. 
He's pretending to be the high court, so he'll ask the victim to look up this term. Okay, to the search, yeah? Mm -hmm. Type high court. Now okay. you will see options, and there is a chancery division of the high court. Yeah. yeah. Click on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you will see chancery division of the high court. Scroll down, mm -hmm. and you will see contact the chancery division of the high court. Uh, contact the chancellor division of the high court. Yeah. Yeah. In. Uh, Beneath that, you will see the information about the Chancery Division of the High Court address, and mm -hmm. there will be a numbers, issue of cases, and there is yes. a telephone number, and then master's mm -hmm. work, telephone yes. number, and judges mm -hmm. work, and then the telephone yes. number. Now you will see the judges work. So I will contact you from the direct line number from the court. Uh, from this mm -hmm. number, you will see that is uh, 0207947. 6297. You may have already noticed that these scammers have two software phones on their desktop. The lower phone here is the one that spoofs the number that can be seen on the government website. And it's trivial to spoof these phone numbers. This is what happened whenever I spoofed the same phone number and rang my home. As you can see, there's no indication that this is any kind of spoofed phone number and you wouldn't be able to tell whether the caller was genuinely from that number or not. The final part of the scam is obviously to extract money from the victim. They will offer two choices, one a scary legal option and the other a little bit easier but it will involve an immediate money transfer. Guess which one they'll promote. So this is the first option where you have to represent yourself yeah. inside the high court while hiring a solicitor for yourself. Now there is an, yeah. another option which has been provided to you and that option is OIC which stands for Offer in Compromise. In that option you first have to pay your outstanding amount to the HMRC today itself and after that only the HMRC will withdraw the case for you, will stop all the legal actions and will book a counseling session appointment at your nearest HFS where you have to go personally for the counselling session. But the scammers are absolutely relentless when they try to get money. It doesn't matter whether someone has no money to their name or whether it's a cancer patient like in this case. And if I owe it, I will just pay it, do you know? I, just I, can't I understand cope with any so, going to court or anything. I, I can't I'm so sorry to that. hear that. Yes, yes, oh, I'm, it's I'm, been a I'm bit so of a shock. I'm so sorry to hear that. Yes, after I, I totally retired, and then, you know, I, I just retired, as I say, last February, and then I was diagnosed with breast cancer in August. So my retirement hasn't been very good. Yeah, um, uh, so my retirement hasn't been very good so far. And after today, I know it's not your fault, but it's worse now. Oh, um, I'm, I'm but as so I say, sorry I to hear that. I would rather just pay it. Yeah, yeah, it's I'm, just one of I'm, those I'm things. Understand. But, you know, I am getting oh. over it. But um, as I say, I can't do with any of this court business or anything. If I owe it, I just pay it. I totally understand, ma'am. Totally understand. Um, Okay, so um, let me let me do one thing. Let me just discuss with the authorities about your situation and also yeah. ask them as to what exactly can be done. Okay, please stay on the line with me and just give yes. me two, one to two minutes. Yeah. I appreciate, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was genuinely interested to see if they would continue to scam this poor woman and when they did eventually come back after a few minutes, this was their conclusion. Uh, Miss Evans, are you there with me? Yes, I am. Yes, uh, thank you so much for holding the line, ma'am. I just had a word with the higher authorities, and I informed them uh, about your situation, and they are also concerned about your health. So, um, obviously, definitely, we are uh, not looking forward uh, to take you to court. Uh, we'll try our best to make sure that this would not affect you in any way whatsoever and uh, this would 
certainly not um, you know uh, make it any worse for you so yes if, um, we have to uh, resolve the situation for you definitely uh, the amount which the HMRC claims is there now what I wanted to ask you is um, uh, are you financially capable enough uh, that uh, even after you would have paid the amount you would have still you are uh, you would still be left with enough to take care of your medical expenses yes yeah yeah okay uh, because uh, we don't want uh, you to pay uh, the amount if uh, you know it would affect you in future and you would not be able to uh, you know because ca getting cancer cured is expensive so we don't want you yeah. to pay if in future this would you know uh, have any uh, Toll on your financials. Well, well. As I say, I'd rather pay it than have. Otherwise, I'll be worrying about it, and it, I'll be worse in my health. You know what I mean? Like, or even if I have to pay it in two halves. Um, Understand. You know, if we could come to some arrangement, I pay Un one thousand now, and then pay another thousand in a month or something. You know, I. But I, to be honest, I just want to get it resolved. I un I totally understand. And um, mm. okay, so uh, Mrs. Evans, um, uh, I also um, I've also written an application for you, and I've requested the authorities yes. to cancel any penalties and legal charges, uh, which might have been added into this uh, amount. So I've yes, thank asked you. them to uh, ask you to pay only the pending taxes, and no no further yes. charges and nothing nothing else apart from that. So uh, the amount okay. which they have told me, which is just the pending taxes, is one thousand four hundred and eighty nine, and this is the actual amount which the HMRC found out missing in the taxes. So there you have it. Cancer patients get scammed for half price. Of course, I couldn't let this poor woman away without knowing that she was talking to scammers. So as soon as she ended her call with them, I called her. Hello? Hello, I want to speak to Mrs Evans, please. Speaking. Hello, Mrs Evans. My name is Jim Browning, and I'm calling you because I believe you got a scam phone call in the last hour or so. Supposedly. Was it a scam? Yes, it was a scam. Um, right, because I had my doubts. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they said it was from the HRMC. Uh, they weren't from HMRC. They are from, uh, they're scammers from India. And, I thought so. Yeah. And you know what? They asked me for my bank details and everything. And to be honest, yeah. I don't usually answer them. Right. Yeah. And um I explained to the man, he said, oh, they'd sent a letter, blah, blah, blah. I said, well, I've had no correspondence at all. Yeah, I said none. from HM, I, I, and everything I said, um, you know, anything I get like that, I pay up. And I know I was paying my tax as I should yeah, have, you know. Indeed, indeed. So you don't need that yeah. worry on top of everything else, but no, that's hopefully no. one less worry anyway. But oh, like thank say, you so much anyway. you, can, you can tell them where to go if they call you again. I probably will answer oh, please do. Friday. I just yeah. tell him, know you're a scam and put the phone down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, that'll do Lovely. it. I'll do the trick. Oh, thank All you right, so much. I'll leave it thank with you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 But who are these cruel scammers and just how much money do they make from these scams? Well, because I could see their computers and they happened to mail the password protected spreadsheet in plain text, I was able to read the spreadsheet. And this is what it looks like for the month of March 2022. I total up the earnings and this is all in UK pounds and you can see that they collected nearly £40,000 in just one month. Not bad for a team of nine people. The spreadsheet also showed that they would earn 60% of what they accumulated and it was converted to rupees. As well as the 60%, they also achieved a number of incentives. Basically, for anyone who could achieve more than a certain pound value, they would get additional bonuses as an incentive. And for good measure, I decided to change their online script. I made it look as if the Indian Central Bureau of Investigation, their FBI, was going to raid their scam call centre and certain people were going to be arrested. 
I would love to see the reaction the next time they read their script. And I was able to report them to the real CBI because I was able to gather a lot more information than just their first names on that spreadsheet. Here you can see one scammer logging into his online bank account and that revealed all of his details including his home address and obviously the work address. Let's hope that the CBI can act quickly. If you like my videos and want to support me, the best way to do this is via Patreon.com. There's a link on screen and in the description. If you like, you can also buy me a coffee. Here's a link. And I'm also on Twitter at Jim Browning 11 Again, thank you for watching.